Hey everybody, this is Lady Sheep from How Michael Lady Sheep Podcast. I am excited because we are still going strong with our Men Where Art Thou series two. Listen, God is the greatest. And he this is. is the second year of me doing this, and I'm telling you, I am inspired, I'm empowered, I'm encouraged because of these amazing men that God has connected me with to come on this platform and bless you people. So in any event, presenting to some and introducing to others, my special guest from Faith, Mr. Anthony Page Jr. and Mr. Yes. Kenny Carter. Welcome, peace, guys. Peace, peace, so peace, on. peace. Listen, I'm excited, y'all. It was good energy already, so <laughs> I'm going to jump into it, okay? So, Faith. Well, Acronym and what's, what's this about? Well, um, I'm, the, I'm the founder and executive director for Fathers Alive in the Hood. And this was something that was created over a decade ago um, following a murder of a young man in our community in Southeast Queens. Um, this young man was attending a uh, boys, boys and Girls Club event of, um, on Linden and my fault, Diablo and Foch, which is probably about two miles, a mile and a half away from where his he got murdered at and um he 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 ran from the gym all the way into the project south uh, south jamaica houses mm -hmm. um where the two other young men where they chased them down and when he was chasing them down every time they were shooting a gun they have these uh these cameras which is called shot blockers right right, right. so every time they were shooting yeah, yeah. They, they the cameras were showing the shots showing them shooting or whatever right mm -hmm. And as soon as they get in front of a specific building, not only did they shoot him, they came back and shot again to make sure he was dead. And um, the you know the, the 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 video went viral. It was like millions and millions of views, less than a few hours. And I was just like, yo, how can people just sit and keep watching this over and over and over? And I'm like, this right here is just is just insane. And um, I was sitting in my studio. Um, with a friend of mine, and he looked at me and was just like, um, I was like, something needs to be done. And he was like, so do something. Oh, come on, friends. We love friends. Yes. Right? So he was like, do something. And I'm like, what do you mean? Like, and I just, you know, you know, I'm in, uh, I, I have a strong relationship with God, and I just was like, oh, what's going to happen? Mm -hmm. And um, he said, I right, put it in my heart, let's do a peace walk. And a peace walk is to confirm that we're not in agreement right. with these particular events that happen in our community because six years before his murder, I was heavily involved in um, the, the, the protests that were happening in New York City for Sean Bell right. rest and in Sean, rest yeah. and be Sean. Right. And um, I was just like I was overwhelmed and I was like really blown back of how many people hit the streets at that time in 2006. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, oh, this, it, it, it was my time of activation. Right. Right. So I, I believe that a lot of times people have certain moments in their life when they become activated. Mm -hmm. And at that particular time, not only was I activated, I was so, um, I was on my pro black, black Panther, <laughs> like, yo, listen, I'm <laughs> on this, <laughs> you know, fight the power movement, right? Like, <laughs> Right, straight up, mm -hmm. and um, every every protest, I was outside. I'm in the streets. I'm if I could lead it, I'm in the front. Like I was, like I was just like I'm for our all people, in. all in. And um, you know, fast forward years go by, and you know, in the process of these years transpiring, people get murdered, people getting shot, left and right. But the the foul thing is, it's not by police. It's not yeah. by the hands of the police. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, um, I just, my activation occurred when it was officers killing a young black man, mm -hmm. or should I say utilizing excessive force in the murder of one and, and the multiple shoot shots on, in another. And, you know, it was just like, what are you, what's really going on here? Like we could go out and we could march and go heavy when the police shoot us, but now I'm seeing the consistency and the murders that we're killing one another left and right. So I'm like, all right. And, and that time when my friend said, do something, I said, yo, that was it. That was it. So I said, you know, um, let's put together this peace walk and we're going to put together the peace walk from 40 projects all the way to um, Circle 5 in Rochdale Village. 
So this is where these individuals allegedly hanged out who, you know, uh, yeah, allegedly killed this young man or whatever the case is, right? And um, we said, okay, I, it was over a couple hundred people um, that, uh, uh, you know, that came out. And I was like, I was moved. I was just like, okay, I didn't even, uh, yeah, it's really, it's, 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 it's going down. I have people just, you know, they was pulling up. And, he, and this is one of the videos that is still live right now on YouTube on our right. um on our channel, which is Fathers Alive in the Hood, um, you can just Google that or you know put it in the search engine and um, and see it. Um, and it's it's the it's the very first peace walk that we had in uh, 2012. And you know from that instance on, it wasn't just about walking anymore. It was like, all right, what are the aftercare, um, you know, procedures? What are you going to do afterwards? Because it's just not about you know raising raising awareness because that's what these walks do when people see a lot of people in the streets or walking they just raise awareness but now it's about what's your follow-up right and and our follow-up became a program that i created which was called the jegna program mm -hmm. um jegna is an ethiopian word which means protector of a culture one who isn't afraid to speak truth to power and pretty much they see their community um to be uh the the paramount to be able to protect it right and by all means necessary right. and and it actually assists individuals that do partake in the program with enhancing their values mm -hmm. right and and what i've noticed um throughout the years is if we valued one another right just being able to love one another and communicate efficiently mm -hmm. uh with one another that um we can be able to break through a lot of barriers of ignorance right and and right now um when i created it we started first it was eight weeks and then it went from eight weeks to, to a 12 week so the eight weeks was in the school um ms72 i believe we started like you know doing the school working in the schools and then i was like the school is a little bit too much restrictions right there's too much restrictions like they you can't even pray in schools mm -hmm. freely you know so i was just like all right i'd rather go into the community centers mm -hmm. so to cut up to cut out course mm -hmm. um what i did was um i started going into community centers throughout various communities um such as uh far rockaway mm -hmm. uh you know i went into hamels uh, community center uh edgemere redfern um community centers i also went to east new york brooklyn which would be Pink Houses um, Community Center. Then we went to Queensbridge Houses. We utilized their um, resident management office. Mm -hmm. Went to Astoria Houses. We <laughs> we used their community center. <laughs> we went to Ravenswood Houses. I used their community center. Then um, you know, it, 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 it it's a lot. Um, it's a lot, and to the point where it was just like so much consistency that the youth had no other option other than to take us serious yeah. because they, they, they seen that it wasn't no situation where Fly by night situation, right. You and, you and the feelings for the moment and now mm -hmm. the moment has passed. Yeah. The so, moment has passed. And, so much for saying that. Yeah. That's a big deal. Yeah. And, and trust. And, and, and at that point it, it's so important that we have to be able to establish these particular relationships that continue to evolve because even the youth that we've impacted, and it's just not even youth per se by themselves, because we deal with men as well, right? Because yeah. we, we find ourselves um, iron sharpens iron, okay. right? So we continuously um, bounce information off of one another mm -hmm. to be able to, um, let me hear it back, soundboard. Mm -hmm. Right. And just right, right. Mm -hmm. and, and we and and we see that's like, how you see what works. Yeah. What right. doesn't. Mm -hmm. What doesn't. So um dealing with the men as well, we provide the men in our youth um opportunities because we heavily believe in volunteerism um within this organization. So after establishing a peace walk within the Jegna program, it's a 12 week cycle where individuals who partake in this particular program they would have to at least do uh, three volunteer initiatives before even the completion of the program is over. So along with um, going into the, coming into the program, the youth have to provide their report cards, right? So we can pretty much keep track of their academic progress mm -hmm. and um, in the process of their academic process, we also want to sharpen them in their socialization skills, 
being able to give them different kind of exercises to be able to express themselves right. because we understand that, you know, this is a time where if they don't know how to express themselves, what happens is it leads to violence anger. and anger and all that other stuff. Absolutely. But a majority of the issue um, that we tackle as fathers alive in the hood is fatherlessness. Mm -hmm. And we kind of pride ourselves on that because fatherlessness is one of the number one, one, number one root causes to violence in America, not just in New York, but right. in America. Period. Right. And and as we know, America is a, one of the biggest corporations on the face of the earth mm -hmm. and they utilize different systems to be able to not only um, benefit from, but they also set situations up where it's always in favor of the corporation. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a lot. You better catch all of that. Mr. Anthony Page Jr. Right. What's going on? <laughs> What's going on? So, so now, Queens, it started in Queens. Right. Yeah. Now you bring it to Long Island. Bring right. it in. Right. Oh, so but, but, what's going well, on? Well, before you bring it to Long oh, Island, okay. Brother Page, he had to be because see, I said it was it's it's up to it takes fifty hours of volunteerism, okay. Okay. right, for anybody as far as the older men to mm -hmm. to show because you hear it a lot of times. Yeah, I, I want to get involved. Yeah, yeah. I want to. I'd be like, I hear you. But, you know, with this particular brother here, it was like, you know, yo, bro, um, I really need help. Mm -hmm. And he's like, oh, yeah? I see you know what I got to do. Oh, okay. <laughs> Look. Like that. Right? What I got to do. So he's like, just show up. I told mm -hmm. him, just show up. Because 80% of the work is always done just by showing sure. up. And um, at the time, I had uh, Redfern Housing in Far Rockaway. Mm -hmm. And this was like right after the murder of Chink's Drugs and, you know, Stack Bundles and all of that, like back to back with a couple of years apart but you know it was just a dark cloud over that particular area Absolutely. and um Ooh, the, the, right. violence, <laughs> the violence the violence had um actually perpetuated over there mm -hmm. where it was beef between red fern and um individuals in hamel's houses which is on the opposite side of the peninsula and i'm like you know um we couldn't really do any kind of cross you know you you come on this the we no, no wednesdays yeah. is red fern Thursdays wow. is Hamels mm -hmm. and Mondays we in the pink houses. So like we had different um, days for it. So I had to, you know, I needed at least three men because it takes three individuals to run our particular program. Okay. So you need a facilitator, mm -hmm. right? You need a mediator mm -hmm. and the mediator is the one who's going to be like, you know, we sitting in a group of about 20 to 25 like young men. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. They start joking and horse playing. The mediator has to be able to Bring extract abstract the kid up out of the, the circle, mm -hmm. take him outside, give him a little rewind. Mm -hmm. And if you have to sit him in another location, then so be it. Mm -hmm. Then we have the, uh, the third person who's our note taker, who's one of the most important because he has to deal with the evaluations. Right. right. So now as he's evaluating every child that's, you know, interacting, right. he's evaluating the mediator, mm -hmm. he's evaluating the facilitator, mm -hmm. you know, the attentive span, all of those things have to go into one component. So now we can be able to provide a a, a, a effective program. So here yeah. comes right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right, you know so I besides Skinny and I being family first, right, which right. is Facts. which is one of our mottos, right? right. Um, I came into faith uh, over for over seventy years now, um, and you know, faith again being an acronym, fathers alive in the hood. That was oh, very important okay. to me. You know, me raising my own king. Uh, right now, young king, my son is 20, he'll be 21 soon. Um, it was very important to me, right. right? And me being a young dad, I became a father 18 years old, you know, three months after high school, you know, graduate high school, my, my oh, son yeah. was born, you know, his mom was like six months pregnant when we were walking oh, across the stage, yeah. you know? Course, so, she the so stage, uh, it was very, so right. it, it's very important, you know, for me to not to be a statistic mm -hmm. and to be a role model and to give back has always been a part of me because also being the oldest of my siblings, I had always, I have a habit of looking back and, and reaching mm -hmm. up and pulling people with me, you know, and making sure they're good, mm -hmm. make sure the house is good. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to do that on the biggest scale, mm -hmm. you know, and um, so I started in Redfront, you know, started making those trips out there, uh, you know, Redfront projects and we go where other people won't go. So that's what, you know what I mean? That's what I'm trying to bring up. <laughs> <laughs> we we, we right. walk in there. So that, that says a lot. 
ahead. You know, and when, and when we walk into those kids respect, and yeah, I remember, you know, after a couple of weeks going in, them starting to change. And it was one mm. simple conversation one night, because usually we have an hour of facilitation where we go over certain topics and mm -hmm. then we go into like where we break out and we break bread together. We feed the kids and everything for mm -hmm. the second hour. Shout out to Jamaica Breeze. Yeah. <laughs> and, <You gotta> eat. <laughs> and one of the kids were like, where are you from? I said, I'm from Long Island. And he looked and he was like, you come from all the way from Long Island for us? Right. And I'm like, yeah. I said, because this means the world to me. You know what I mean? And, and I want to be influential in your life and, and allow you guys to see people like yourselves mm -hmm. who are doing things right in the world, you know? Mm -hmm. And they were like, wow, man. Mm -hmm. Like, and from that point on, there started to be a change in Absolutely. them. Like, they were there before we even got there, like, yeah. ready for us, you know right. what I mean? Helping us get the food out of the car, helping us set up right. the room. Because they're like, okay. Okay. these guys care. Yeah. And that's right. my point. You know, all we got to do is show our children that we care. All they, all they want is a hug. All they want is a, some attention, yes. you know? And, it, and, and it's not that much to give, you know what I mean? It's free. That part, Anthony, you know? The bars, <laughs> we, see, we see it going on and it, it you know, kids, are, they're human beings. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Their energy, they feel just like we feel. I think sometimes we, we kind of shortchange them as if they don't. Right. You know what I'm saying? That right. young man saying to you, you come away from Long Island, that triggers something like, yo, nah, he care for real for real. Like, what? Right. He done got on uh, Southern State and the belt. Right, right. <laughs> right, right. Oh, right. He some gas to come out here. Right. Oh, and he don't know me from nowhere. Right. So right. that will cause a change in a person's thinking, especially when when it's mm. even your own family that don't take our time to have a conversation with you. Right, and yeah. You get suspended from school. They just like, he done got suspended again. Mm -hmm. And they just send you to your room instead of having a conversation to ask you, why are you acting out? What's right. going on? What's going you on? know, is it because me and mom broke up? Right. You know, what's happening here? Mm -hmm. So they are dealing with people who are right near them, not taking out the time to see what's going on with them emotionally and people coming from afar to yeah. do exactly that. That's you know right. what I'm saying? So, you know, thank you so much for sharing that. You know, and we, and we see we see these young men come out, you know, week after week and they're excited and they're seeing something different, you know, and right. after they're completing their program, they able to like, you know, get a little you know, face swag, and right, they're, right, they're right. proud to walk around with a hat or a hoodie yeah. or something because yeah. the brand means something, you absolutely, know what I mean? Absolutely. And, and uh, it's, it's just real close. So I, I'm actually an executive board member and as well as the, the chapter president of Long Island. Right. Um, and we're, we're working with a lot of local organizations now to really bring and create a true impact on Long Island because yeah. Long Island needs it. Right. Long Island absolutely needs a village, okay? Yes. Right. Not... The village of Hempstead. I'm talking about a, a village. village. Right, right, village. You know what that means? That means, you know. Whew, but so we, we also have our five pillars as well, right? So our five pillars is trust, integrity, communication, transparency, then there's collaboration. So I have to trust mm -hmm. that an individual is trans. No, I have to trust that an individual is integral enough to communicate with transparency in order for us to collaborate. That's right. right. So, you know, we're not, we're not putting ourselves first. It's always, you right. know, it's people over profit. Mm -hmm. And, mm, and, we've, and we always, you know, been on that kind of time where, you know, we can watch other organizations prosper, mm -hmm. right? Because they're good with paperwork. They're good with doing what Brands, they do, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. To each his own. Right. But for the years that we've been out here on the field, on the front line, um, we have gained not only the respect of the people, but we've also get got the support, right. right? We have gotten support from different agencies mm -hmm. and different government officials from city council to uh, senators mm -hmm. to assemblymen. But see, the thing is, we can we gain this people respect, right. but the issue is about dollars now, right? Absolutely. Because now it's, if, if we get, let's say, uh, what they have discretionary funding, and discretionary funding might come in ten thousand dollars four to five different times. Okay. Right. And let's say this this uh senator might have said here's ten thousand, this councilwoman might say here's another five or ten thousand, another one might say the same, but now here's this funding, which now is looking like monopoly money, right? Mm -hmm. Because now we have to be able to match that funding. Right. So right. now in order to match that funding, that means we have to raise the funds, right, and then spend the money. Then once we spend the money, then we have to go show receipts yeah. saying this is Which what we spent the money on. Right, right, right. It wasn't no cars, it wasn't no jewelry, it wasn't no, it was food, it was it was uh some 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 apparel, right. it was trips for the youth, it was mm -hmm. taking them out of 
their, you know, their environment and just switching up the environment so they can start to think different. Right. So it be yeah. things like that that just really be the roadblocks, um, you know, for the elevation that is going to take because you know our goal is to employ two hundred or more individuals in our city. Right. Just starting, yeah. you know, right. just starting, mm -hmm. and that's where you know we still pushing for it. Gotcha, gotcha. So when you guys, okay, so let me let me do this. Shout out to the friend. Are you still friends with the person? <laughs> yes, <sir>. my friend. <laughs> my friend. My friend just got finished a fourteen day um, hunger strike, <laughs> and, and um, he was in Long Island City by a board of education building that was being underutilized and had an ample amount of space. Mm. And he took it upon himself to say, "Listen, we need the space for the community." And he put a tent outside the building. He stood outside the building in the cold and in the rain yeah. for 14 days on a hunger strike. So shout out to Sugar Ray LaShawn Malston. That's his name. Hand, <laughs> so, you know, he, like, you know, and, and he's a world changer himself. So, wow. you know, and everybody, you know, we all play a, a great part in the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And I believe that he has um, ordained certain individuals mm -hmm. to be in a position not only of power, but for us to exude our authority mm -hmm. as he already given it to us. That's but some right. of us fall short because we fall back on our own understanding. Mm -hmm. That's <laughs> right. So, That's right. so even, all right, even speaking of that, falling back on our own understanding, a lot of times, and I would love for you guys to touch on this, a lot of times when we think about our communities, the communities like you're speaking of and like the communities I come from, and I, I grew up on Terrace Avenue, which still definitely needs prayer um right. when you think of when you think about you know these environments going through the deaths you know kids losing their friends yeah. i mean let's keep it a buck kids losing their parents also to violence and or drug addiction things of that nature how do you how do you even tap into that is it something where connect to the training or something where how you were raised you grew up around the type of stuff how you guys reach like how do they look at you and be like man he don't know what he's talking about oh yeah he get me yeah, how do y'all I mean, find that, that, it, it, that space it, it comes from our focus groups really you okay. know the jegna program the focus groups that we have with the actual you know fathers okay. um you know allowing people to talk you know a lot in our community we suppress a lot mm -hmm. you know we kind of like it happens so often that it's like, okay, it's just another day. Let's move on. And we try to move on with our lives, but we really don't, you know, it, it, it bothers us so much that it comes out in other ways. Okay. So sometimes, you know, things are happening in the home that didn't happen before relationships start going south because it's something we didn't deal with. Right. right? And again, we didn't talk about, it. we didn't communicate, which is one of our pillars. Right. Right. Um, and, and it, and it comes out. It will find, you know, water finds its level, right? Yeah. Um, so with us, these focus groups, we find we give people an outlet mm -hmm. to speak their minds mm -hmm. with no judgment, you know, at their own will. And we talk about it and we just, we, we get it out. We come to an understanding. And I feel like even, you know, in our, both the, the youth groups and, and the, the older male groups, like everyone leaves there like relieved. Yeah. Like yeah. I needed that tonight. Right, right. <laughs> Facts. You know? It's and like a weight thing, the uh, uplift them, yeah. All the time, bro. The reason never why fails. I call this series The Men Were Arts Our Series is because a lot of times the men don't have anybody. Right. Especially our men. And right. they said it flat out to me, like, who I'm going to tell? You know what yeah. I'm saying? These are grown men with their own children, with their own wives, and you know what I'm saying? And they're like, who, who am I going to talk to? So how has it been, you know, I know you mentioned, you know, the youth and the men. How has it been even talking to these fathers? Because let's let's just be, you know, we're gonna keep it all the way a buck in here, okay? Mm -hmm. We have some fathers that just were not ready to be dads. Right. They just weren't ready. So how mm -hmm. do you, as men and fathers, try to talk to another grown man to help them see their flaws or see where you know they gotta just take accountability and get past that place so they can be a better father, yeah. effective father, so, not just present. I'm talking about effective. hands on effective. <laughs> it's it's first. I hope I had a question. Yeah, no, nah, it's. it's, it's <laughs> It's, it's, a, it's a couple. It's a couple of. It's a couple of components, right? One is always education, because a lot of times yeah. when you're dealing with certain relationships, right, men don't have any idea about postpartum depression, right? And we could hear it 
and you know we oh she she got postpartum or but no one has probably never sat down and explained to this man or this young man these are yeah what it looks like these are the symptoms this is how you're supposed to have the patience and the tolerance to be able to deal with it to be able to stand by her but a lot of times what happens is postpartum will have a father leave his post Mm -hmm. and and he doesn't even willingly want to do that because at times we have to understand as well that um one of our first lessons we give is you know what is a soul and if you can't describe what it is, then that means you cannot protect it. If someone Ooh, was to come in and, and, and they want to confiscate it. And, you know, we heard a lot of the times when we were young, like from my grandparents at times, the devil wants your soul. Mm. And you'd be like, oh, OK. You're like, OK. And that's it. But when somebody asks you, what's your soul? You're like, um, it's um, it's my essence. <laughs> you know, it's it's my aura. Get deep. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and you'd be like, oh, really? <laughs> Yes, right, right. it's in a bag. <laughs> it's in a bag early. So, you know, we I'm gonna just keep it simple. The soul is three components, which is always have to be identified because then it helps the individual to be able not only to identify it, but also to protect it. Right. So with understanding the mind, the emotions, and the will, those are the three major components of a man's soul, a man being species, not gender, not gender right? right? But species. Um, it helps us be able to say, listen, bro, we are five part being as man. So if it's your mind, your emotions and your will, there are two other things that are always at war. Right. And that's going to be your flesh and that's going to be your spirit. Right. What are you going to feed your spirit in order for it to stay in domination of your flesh? Mm-hmm. So now when we have these particular situations in our relationship, we find ourselves uh, evacuating. Right. Running, right. right? Because now we're more so feeding, responding to the flesh, responding to I can't take this no more, responding to I want something different, responding to all of these different feelings, emotions, right? Because now I'm willing to do whatever it is I'm willing to do because this is what I want, right? And in all actuality, that one is just temporary. So now you're ready to make a permanent decision for for a temporary feeling. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it's not even what they want; it's no. what accepts them does that make any sense that's true it ain't really what i want because mm-hmm. i want that i wish i could reach her while she's going through postpartum mm-hmm. while she's going through what she's going through but i don't have the tools to do so so i'm gonna go over here with her who i don't really want <laughs> but i'm not being aggravated okay. i'm okay not even really comfortable but i feel a little relief right does that make any sense it does in a sense but however depending on the situation Let's say like some, some, let's say, (laughs) let's say like some, some men don't always resort to looking for another companion or even another woman, so to say. Mm -hmm. Some men just want perfect peace. Some men, I know guys who just, they got their own little one bedroom Mm -hmm. or they room. Man cave. Yeah, straight (laughs) man cave. I wasn't thinking about a female. No, no. (laughs) Right. Just in general though. But in, in different guys have different, um, avenues to be able to um get on to find that peace right mm-hmm. now sometimes another woman that might be his peace mm-hmm. at that time mm-hmm. being by itself that might be his mm-hmm. peace mm-hmm. or just saying listen can we just co-parent right can we just you know let yeah. let me just take care of the children right. while you're going through what you're going through right. and let me just deal with the children right right right, right. Sometimes that works, sometimes that Absolutely. don't work because Absolutely. it depends on the woman, right? Because if, mm-hmm. if she has any kind of forms of toxicity in her, mm-hmm. then what happens? I'm using these children against you. As a matter of fact, you ain't seeing these kids. <laughs> because of the uh, power, power play. Like, like, yeah. But yeah, no, it's a lot. It's a it's lot. There's a lot involved. And it's, it's, it's something that can't be ignored because, you know, when your children, like, like I mentioned earlier, with the children acting out of school, you know, if you're not having conversations about them when they see yeah. you, you and the girlfriend or the wife or whatever arguing or whatever, whatever case may be, or they can feel that you guys are gonna break up, they start, they feel that, you know, they feel that, so they act out of school. Right. Or mm-hmm. somebody mentioned their mama something, something, something in a joking way that they just joked about it yesterday. Today's a different day. They might pop on them because right. now they feeling like my mama might not be in the house no more. Mm-hmm. My dad might not be in the house anymore. Right. So it's like it's so much involved. And that's but, a, that's another example of trying to suppress something yeah. and, it, and it coming out anyway, right? Yeah. It's coming out through other actions uh, and, right. and behavior. And then, yeah, and, then, right. and then also fatherlessness. 
because that's, that's one of the key things as well. Oh, yeah. Um, when we talk about certain um resents resentments towards authority figures and things of that nature, we currently are on Rikers Island. We are in R and D C and then we are in GRVC. We are in two different buildings. One is adults where we probably more so like um four hours, two days out the week, and then we got the adolescents. We got a two two days out the week for two hours in each, you know, in the housing units. And in all aspects, one of the first questions is how many of you young how many of you were raised with the father in the household? Right. Out of a dorm of thirty one, one. Mm -hmm. Mm. The rest yeah, of the dirty, no, everybody's no, no father, no none of that. So when we think, when I sit up here and I think about, you know, the, the, this conversation in particular, and we think about youth acting up in school and all of that, there's a big factor and a big void that is really relevant in all of our communities. Mm -hmm. And if we don't have men to fill in that void because mom could do but so much shout out to all of the single mothers out there man that's out there really like really trying to do it all some of them even celebrate fathers they right, right. you know what i'm talking about I don't like that. yeah I, I, I don't yeah like it. now we i we done got I over it already got you check people who would text yeah. me I'm like, I'm always a mom. mom I'm right. thinking right. of now I'm a good mom, but I could never be his father. It right. I could never. Both, and we both, both have that daily. This is okay. <laughs> yeah. We got hours, it's all right. Right, right. And, and and we just at that point right now where we can acknowledge it, but you know, it has to be a balance. I had a a, a quick analogy for some of the, the individuals to just pay try to like just pay attention to. When you go in front of a courthouse. There's a woman there with scales, and these scales are imbalanced, right? And you know, you pass her, then you find yourself in front of a judge, and over this judge, there's a sign that says, "In God we trust." And a lot of the times, when individuals are in front of a judge, I would like to say is about some money, right? Right. right? It, it, the root, the roots of the root cause of this right here is right. about some right. bread. Right. You owe me some money. Uh, something about some money. So <laughs> in the back of that dollar, right. there's the same sign that's on the back of that right. judge. Right. Right. In God we trust. So is, is it fair to say that when an individual cannot identify his or her soul, that they can become emotional, that they could literally lose their minds mm -hmm. right. and that they can be willing to do pretty much any and everything to or for what they want? So there's a system that was already premeditated and placed and put together and structured right. just for individuals such as that, where they could put the blindfold over her eyes, okay. right? And say, listen, this is how uh, the imbalance happens because the right side of the brain is predominantly used by the woman. Right. Yeah. The left side is predominantly used by the male. Mm -hmm. So when you exclude this male out of the household, here you have a woman who's giving all she can right. to a young boy. Right. Now, let's say if there's no father, no, no male figure in this child's life, nine times out of ten, you're going to have a sassy boy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And not only is he going to be sassy, he's going to be emotional. He's going to be angry. He's going to have resentment against authority, some shape, form, or fashion. So now we ask ourselves, how did we get here? Mm -hmm. I just painted it out. Because there's a system that was already in place to make sure situations are occurring where we have to be responding instead of being uh, proactive, proactive now, now reactive. we reactive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah. and, and I always like to explain it very simple. I always like to use like the game of chess, right? Mm -hmm. You got the queen and you got the king, mm -hmm. and right? And, and at the end of the day, and shout out to all my queens out there, the queen is the most powerful, powerful. piece, mm -hmm. but the king is the most valuable right. piece. Right. If you capture the king, the game's it's over. Right. That's yeah. it. And and that's that's what's happening in our households. So our yeah. kings need to take their rightful throne and fact. hold down their households. That's a fact. So yeah. let me ask you this in reference to, you know, you guys growing up. And then you just happened to it, then I'll, I'll ask another question. So you, you shared that you were dad at 18. Right. What was that like with mom and dad? Because I want to I wanna feel, did you guys grow up with your dad's mom? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. he gave me yeah. <laughs> he, he, he was there my father was there but my father was like 
He was in and out. He was so, my father was a hustler. That's what I was going. I wanted you to kind of tap into that because yeah. I while you were talking, I'm listening, but I got stuck on the one kid that said he had a father. Gotcha. So I'm wondering is was he present though? Right. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. There really is a difference. I know girls can't wait because and let me let me do this real quick. We're gonna move on, but to the females who love to make other women feel bad that they don't have a husband or they don't have a man in the house, please stop. Please stop. Everybody's trying to figure things out. You know, nobody's perfect. Right. And I mean, it looks good on paper being married or having a fall in the house, but what kind of dad is he? What kind of individual is he? Right. So I want to understand like, you know, how you were raised with your parents in the home, but you still ended up being in this position where now you are a young father. How did that affect you? I had to become a man, you know, very early, you know, and I think, you know, helping, you know, you know, since with my younger siblings kind of helped me with that, mm -hmm. but I had to, I had to find my way, you know, I had to go to school. I went to college while well, I'm going to college. I'm, you know, I'm buying diapers and everything right. else that, that, that's required, you know, yeah. I'm working, I'm coming home to relieve his mom from, 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 uh, you know, from her duty, right. right. And give her a break because that post of depression is real. Right. Yeah. And, and also bond with my son, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, so it, it, it took some, some learning, you yeah. know, but that was my priority, you know, mm -hmm. um, having my dad and other positive male role models around me, uncles, grandfathers that, that showed me the way mm -hmm. and even, you know, neighbors and, and, and certain strangers that influenced me. Um, when I helped my son the first time in the hospital, I'm like, my world changed, right. my world changed, mm -hmm. you know? And from that day forward, I, I wanted to make sure that I move accordingly to give him better than what I had right. because the process is that we should be elevating every generation should be, be, should be going higher our ceiling should be our children's floor that's where they start right. and they continue so that that's has always been you know my focus to really um you know make sure I work hard and, and do better for him you so they ain't told you about condoms <laughs> they ain't told you about sex are you you get raw? <laughs> because the kids are having uh, listen, let me tell you something. I I I, I know. In the music. I know like, what I was doing, and, and, and so did his mom. And I and we were high school sweethearts, you know. Yeah. So um, uh -huh. and, and we even you know, you know, a few years after he was born, you know, we were together for a few years and we split, you know. But we always co-parent, and we always had a a, a great relationship. You, guys you know, shout out to her. She, shout she, out she, to her. She, she know, so you guys she had is, a friendship because right. you kind of right. grew up together, kind of. Right, you know, we grew up. We grew up together from kids and we right. had to become adults right. and raise a kid together so we had to figure this thing out mm -hmm. you know what i mean mm -hmm. and you're more you, you know uh, powerful when you work together Absolutely. than apart yeah, and my whole time. thing and she'll even say this i never wanted to be a statistic meaning that i don't need no other man to tell me how to raise my child i don't need a court system mm -hmm. to right. tell me Hello, what to do with my right, kid right, right, so right. we made a, a, a you know a, a pact that mm -hmm. We ain't never going no court. We, don't have to, we sell we this yeah. ourselves. Right, right, we, right. we we make agreements yeah. and we stick to those agreements. Thanks. I made that you know same pattern. So now, now listen. The key thing that he said: we made these agreements and we stuck to the agreement. Right. So now, let me kind of switch gears a little bit. When it comes to you talking to these men, who I'm sure they're sharing with you, not having issues with the baby mothers or the wife or whatever, she done moved on and now she acting like I don't exist when. You know, it was all good as a week ago right. type situation. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? So how do you help them to understand you still have to figure out how to find a common place, a common ground for that child? You're going to have to get beyond yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay? So it don't have to be a court thing because a court thing is tearing us up. Right. Let's just, we got to right. say that. It's tearing relationships up. It's tearing people It's even tearing the kids up. I saw a video of a guy in a car. His son is bawling crying. Okay? Hmm. I was so, these parents that on my nerves their kids crying in any event the kid is crying on speaker with the mother like oh mom want to get such such the father is like nah ask her to take out the child support right tell her why i ain't getting i ain't getting nothing for you tell so she want to take me to court tell her to take whatever you need out the child support i ain't buying nothing like and the kid is boohooing and i'm like sir you're hurting your kid in this moment regardless of what happened in that court he sees what you're doing right now so how do you guys have these conversations with these men about, you know, their issues connected to the women that they chose? Whether you chose them for the night at the club, or whether you chose them for 10 years and y'all just had a baby, you chose them. So there's this word called responsibility. 
Right. No. Right. And um, in responsibility, an individual has to have the ability to respond. So when you have to help an individual do a self-evaluation, first and foremost, mm-hmm. right? First off, who are you? Right. What do you want out of life? Mm-hmm. What are your plans? Where are you going? Right. Certain things you have to ask individuals so that they can really sit down in their silence and really come up with some solid answers. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times individuals don't come up with solid answers because they're still trapped in this illusion that they've created in their minds. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times the illusion isn't too far fetched from anybody that has the same mind. Right. Because sometimes we'll we'll create these things in our own heads and you can be in a I don't care how long your relationship is. Let your spouse go somewhere and his phone go off and you can't contact her or him and the next thing you know right, you know right, right. <laughs> you got this whole <laughs> you got this whole thing going on in your head of what he or she right. might be doing, be doing yeah. yeah could be doing right and and a lot of times when we can't we can't they tap in right, right. <laughs> a lot of times when we can't tap in to um you know that that first thing was the, the trust right, right? Yeah. when we can't tap into that trust part meaning that it's not about you know trusting other people it's about trusting yourself right right, right. right. and when you could trust yourself then i think it's more so easier to trust the one that you know you are intertwined with and the one you intertwine with is this the one you're making love to every other day mm-hmm. so you know what i'm saying right. and you constantly y'all laying down with each other and y'all having this kind of uh this level of intimacy that only you two share. Right. So it's like when you're in these particular situations, you're so wrapped up into that person right. that it's, it's, it's difficult for that separation. Mm-hmm. So now when you go into this place of child support, court, relationships, and all mm-hmm. of these different things that come into the play, these things then become toxic to a degree where the thing that you once had no longer exists. And sometimes you really yearn for that. Yeah. You really yearn yeah. for that. I want, I want my old thing back. <laughs> like you want that. Right. Yeah. And you go through these emotions to the point where you are literally now losing your mind yeah. because now your mind is in a, another place. So, you know, I think more so for me, it's about really helping individuals identify not only their soul, but helping them identify as well as their seven gates, right? So some people are like, yo, what's your seven gates? Your seven gates is the first things that you have to stand in alignment with to be able to protect that very thing we call your soul. Right. So what is this? It's your seven. This is one. This is two. This is three. This is four. This is five, right? Then you have your six and your seven. So now it's like these are all the things that you smell a perfume. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. I can't keep my mind over you hear a certain yeah, song. song. Right, 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 right. Right. Devil is a liar. Right. 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 Yeah. You see certain things. You you so speak true. certain things. Right. And it's all of these are the things that have to put you in a place of of understanding. And it's not, like I said, we can't lean to your own understanding. Mm-hmm. So when we start leaning to our own understanding, this is when the confusion comes in that because our own understanding comes with emotions. Right. And if our emotions aren't leveled, so to say. Is it going to be quite impossible to even be able to move forward? Right. You're stuck. You're still yeah. trying to get past this. Yep. So exactly. just helping them identify those things, it, it really gives them some kind of tools and um, guidance to, to, to work their way out. And another thing is, you know, besides responsibility, is reality, right? Um, <laughs> facing reality. Because a lot of times what we find, and when you go into these deeper into these conversations, there's usually something between those parents the of the ones that are no longer together, that they didn't let go. Right. There's yep. a feeling, there, there's emotions, there's something involved mm-hmm. with one another that they didn't let go. Mm-hmm. And they're holding on to that and making that the focus instead of focusing on that child. Right. And what we have to do is face reality. Us is no more. <laughs> and it's we focusing on this yes. child. Yes. You right. know, and that's the priority. Mm-hmm. And that's how you make it successful. 